The Liberty Weekly Podcast, Episode Zero. The greatest danger to the state is independent intellectual criticism. There is no better way to stifle that criticism than to attack any isolated voice, any raisers of new doubts, as a profane violator of the wisdom of his ancestors. Another potent ideological force is to deprecate the individual and exalt the collectivity of society. For since any given rule implies majority acceptance, any ideological danger to that rule can only start from one or a few independently thinking individuals. The new idea, much less the new critical idea, must needs begin as a small minority opinion. Therefore, the state must nip the view in the bud by ridiculing any view that defies the opinions of the mass. Listen only to your brothers or adjust to society, thus becomes ideological weapons for crushing individual dissent. By such measures, the masses will never learn of the non-existence of their emperor's clothes. Welcome everyone to the first edition of the Liberty Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Pat McFarlane, and joining me here as always from this point forth is my co-host Jeremy McCollum. Jeremy? Thank you, Pat. All right, Jeremy, so let's just dive in here right away. Uh, can you tell me what is the Liberty Weekly Podcast and what are we hoping to accomplish with it? Yeah, so the, the topics that we hope to be covering on this podcast include news, geopolitics, and the, the history behind it. We also want to be covering uh, social issues such as the far left and the alt-right. We also want to hopefully talk about a lot of theory with related to libertarianism and we hope to have some guests on. Yeah, so when it comes to guests, um, this show is underneath the Tom Woods blogging umbrella. Uh, there's a lot of listeners of the show that have started their own websites and podcasts. Uh, we'd definitely be interested in having some people from that group on the show. Um, otherwise, we are very much open to people outside that umbrella. Uh, I know I have a few people that I have lined up or yep. that I'm in contact with. Otherwise, we'd be definitely open to audience suggestions. Uh, anything you want us to talk about or hear about, uh, don't be afraid to give us a shout out through a comment or through um, our email addresses that we'll include here on the show notes page. Now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Liberty Weekly, the website, uh, libertyweekly.net. Liberty Weekly is a website that I created about a year ago. I do several different columns on the website. First, I have my blog roll, uh, which basically comes out on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, that time of the week. I'll talk about current issues that are going on. I know last week I had an article about uh, the budget impasse scenario. Uh, I talked about um, Ron Paul's, uh, what is it, Ron, Ron Paul's Liberty Report. Yep. And um, he was talking about the budget impasse. Um, so I have that. I'll include that article in the show notes page as well. Uh, another column that I do is Thought Crime Thursdays, which is actually my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard that people in the audience like it as well. So basically the point of the column is I use uh, fictional dystopia um, and in literature to compare to things that are a little dystopic in our current uh, reality here yep. with the current political climate. Uh, one thing that I actually did, uh, my fav one of my favorite columns, is I talked about the moon is, is a harsh mistress mm -hmm. and uh, ideological revolution. And so I talked about um, the Heinlein book um, taking place on the moon, and I compared the revolution that happens in the book to the American Revolution and uh, a work that I was studying in one of my law school classes. So um, you get that, that angle there. And that will be in the show notes as well. Yes. All, all these I'll, I'll throw in the show notes page here for you. Um, also, in the past, I had an educational series. Um, it was called What is Money? Uh, very important to see what makes good money. Um, and I think that that segment of the website will be merged with this podcast just to convey the theory behind um, libertarianism and um, some economics there. So... We'll, yeah, that's definitely something we'll be talking about. Oh, yeah, we'll address that for sure. 
And I also do a weekly news roundup, which is a little tongue-in-cheek. It's, it's labeled Liberty Links. In there, I basically just go through all the news from the current week and link to stories that I think were a little overlooked, uh, some stories that I think deserve some more attention. And so hopefully that will be part of your, it will become part of your weekly routine to stop by on either Sunday or Saturday and check that out. Um, so, so going forward here, we also want to talk about what, uh, what is our ideology since or we're who we are, who we are basically. Um, so Jeremy, why don't you tell me a little bit about what you believe in, um, and what Liberty is about for you? Yeah. So I, I would call myself a, a voluntarist or an anarcho-capitalist. Those both describe me very well. And what Liberty is, it's not not using not initiating aggression or force against anyone else it's the only theory of government that i th- believe is moral that is some justified in existing which you know I, i'm an anarchist so it's uh, justified in not existing i guess you could say <laughs> and what would yours be well i would i would say i'm a i identify mainly as a voluntarist um i i also believe in anarcho capitalism and Uh, the free market and stuff like that, heavily influenced by the Mises Institute and the works of Ron Paul, uh, Murray Rothbard, uh, Ludwig von Mises, Karl Menger, all of those uh, economists. And I know that we're throwing out a bunch of terms here. Uh, Definitely that's something that we're going to address in the very next episode, Uh, what the liberty movement is, uh, who we are as libertarians, and we'll probably talk about the non-aggression principle. Yeah. Um, what, how did you become a voluntarist? Oh, that's a funny story, uh, Jerry, actually. So Jerry and I were living together in college. We were roommates. Uh, we lived in a house with how many boys? It was six. Six boys. And I say boys because we were boys. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So, so essentially I've always been a libertarian in the same way as a lot of libertarians, Um, Before they discover what libertarianism is, they have always thought that way. And as they discover the theory, they, I don't know, see it as true because they've known it the whole time, perhaps. It it, it was, uh, you were instantly drawn to it. Yeah, instantly drawn to it. And um, uh, it just kind of went from there. I heard about Ron Paul I think in 2012 in college, one of my other friends mm-hmm. uh, suggested Ron Paul to me. But then I, I met Jerry when we lived in this house together, and and we got to talking about politics together, and everything just kind of I don't know stewed for a little while. Yeah, yeah. and and we were friends, and then I moved out. Um, I started my first year of law school, and um, I eventually came over to the anarchist side, Mm -hmm. um, just realizing that a lot of the basic fundamental assumptions behind libertarianism libertarianism was universally applicable and not just applicable in certain situations. So, um, Jerry, you want to talk a little bit about your experience with libertarianism? Yeah, my my history. Uh, So when I I grew up uh, liberal, you could say, but I was very undecided about a lot of things. It was kind of like well, I think gay marriage should be legal, so I guess I should vote for Obama, right? Like, that's that was, like, the level that I was at. Yeah, I was at that <laughs> level, too. Yeah. I, in, in 08. Yeah, no, that, that was, that was uh, you know, like, 2012, like, late 2012, I was like that. And then after the election, like, after the whole Ron, after, like, the Ron Paul craze started to die out, that was when I, I that's when I found uh, Adam versus the man and uh, Stefan Molyneux, and I completely jumped over minarchiz- libertarianism and minarchism, and I became an anarcho-capitalist, you know, uh, over the course of, like, probably, like, three or five months before I was, like, really convinced. So I, I think I think that's something that's kind of funny. Normally you hear about, you know, there, there's a joke that, like, what's the difference between a, a minarchist and an anarchist? And it's six it, months of reading. Six months of reading, yeah. And then I met Pat later, uh, and I we, we talked about politics a bit, um, and... Over over the last couple of years, I haven't I, I haven't really changed much of my core beliefs, but there's been a lot of nuance that I've learned uh, and hopefully can share with you guys, the audience. Yeah, yeah, I think the nuances. I mean, the core beliefs don't change, but the nuances kind of do from time to time. So, yeah. 
Yeah, but that core belief centers around the non-aggression principle, which I would say is the fundamental cornerstone of our ideology. And uh, Jerry, what is that non-aggression principle? So the non-aggression principle says that the aggression, the initiating force or uh, acts of violence is illegitimate and immoral and should not be done. It's not a pacifist principle, uh, self-defense and like a uh, force or aggression that is in response to force or aggression is allowed, but to initiate it is immoral. Yes. And um, just essentially the argument, we would take that a step further and say, okay, already in our individual lives, we abide by the non-aggression principle. Um, people, usually you get thrown in jail if if you decide to use force instead of your uh, words and persuasion to affect change and interact with people throughout the community. And uh, we would simply just say that um, that doesn't end at the individual level and it doesn't go away once people get into groups. Yeah. Uh, I, all collectives and groups, the non-aggression, the uh, non-aggression principle applies to as well. So whether or not you're uh, a bureaucrat or a, a soldier or a policeman, that you still should not be initiating force against others. Yes, and we are we advocate a stateless society because by definition the government does not abide by these principles. Yeah, by taxation is inherently done without con the consent of those being taxed. Yeah, so we would believe in the non-aggression principle, and uh, extenuating from that, we come to the conclusion that taxation is theft, and there's no justification for it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And the, the differences between, diff if you're not familiar, different kinds of libertarians uh, would just apply this principle to more or less things so uh there are, what we would refer to as a minarchist doesn't uh, apply this principle to uh usually police and self-defense and uh, courts um while we think that that's hypocritical they don't yes and we would assert that all of these things that uh, everyone would consider integral integral to the functioning of a society we would say these things can be done voluntarily and without the use of aggression or the threat of violence through taxation. And so a lot of these terms that we were throwing around just now, we will be addressing directly in the next episode, episode one. Uh, but for now, I just want to uh, sum this episode up. Uh, I'd like to let you know what the best way is for you to follow the Liberty Weekly podcast and... But I can't stress enough that the best way to follow the Liberty Weekly podcast is to sign up for our email list. And on that email list, you'll be getting personalized content notifications um, as, as well as some anecdotes from me. I'll talk about, you know, maybe what's going on in the world of geopolitics and uh, what's going on maybe in my life personally. Um, but also signing up for that email list will get you a free copy of our ebook. Uh, the title is Just Say No to Drug Prohibition. Uh, it's an economic policy analysis of the American War on Drugs. And uh, we're also doing a promotion for the first week of, of the podcast launch. Any new email subscribers will automatically be signed up on a list to win either an Amazon gift card or a Steam gift card. Uh, so make sure that you get yourself on that email list. I can't stress enough the importance of that for the health of our podcast here. Another important thing regarding the podcast is that we are growing. Obviously, we haven't done this before, so we rely a lot on your input and suggestions for the show. Um, it'd be really helpful for us if you sent us an email or left a comment on any of the episodes. Uh, we'll be sure to get back to you and uh, integrate that into our own ideas for the podcast and just make sure that uh, we're all on the same page with what um, the audience desires. Uh, another thing that's very important that I'd like to stress is uh, subscribe, rate, review us on iTunes or any platform that you are listening to this audio currently. And uh, with that, thank you so much for tuning in. This is episode zero, the introduction to the Liberty Weekly podcast. I'm your host, Pat McFarlane, and signing off is my co-host, Jerry McCollum. Thank you. Thank you very much.
We'll see you in episode one.